Hello and welcome to the third lesson of the AGR SketchUp course. In today's lesson, we're going to learn the line command. To activate the line command, we can click on this pencil icon here in the Getting Started toolbar, or we could go to Draw, Lines, and then click on this line. Or we could press the L for the shortcut. So I press L to activate the line command. There are three ways to draw a line. The first way to draw a line is to click and then move your cursor to whichever position you want and then release the left mouse button. The second way to draw a line is to click once and then move the cursor and then click once again to create that line. As you can see, the line starts to continue until you make a closed boundary or a face. Or you could press escape key on keyboard to confirm this line. The third way to draw a line is to click once and then move your cursor to whichever position you want and type a value for the length of that line. For example, I type 10 for 10 meters and then uh, press the enter key to confirm that line. And you can see that the line continues just like the second way of drawing a line. And I press escape to confirm that line. There are a lot of inferences inside of SketchUp which you can use to make your drawings easier and faster. So for example, at the end points of each line, you have a green circle which indicates an endpoint. And at the midpoint of a line, you can see that we have a blue circle which indicates the midpoint, and we have on edge inference, which is indicated by a red square. So if we want to, for example, divide this line into two parts. We could click on this midpoint and then click on an endpoint, and this will create two separated lines. Or, as you can see, we have now an endpoint in the middle right now, and we have two midpoints here. So, let's for example now create a shape. I press L on keyboard and then click once to create the starting point and then move the cursor to the right and type 5 for 5 meters and then press enter and then move the cursor up in the green direction and then type 6, press enter and then move the cursor to the right in the red direction and press 4 and press enter and move the cursor down and type 3 and press enter and move the cursor to the right, type 4, press enter, and move the cursor up in the green direction, and type 8, and press enter. It's very important to have all these lines according to these axes. So, for example, uh, when I move the cursor to the right, it will turn red, and when I move the cursor up, it will turn green. And now, if I want to create a line which is the same length of these three lines added together, I could add the values that I have indicated for these lines and type the value to create that line. Or I could use a simpler way. I could move my cursor to this endpoint and then move the cursor up. As you can see, there is a green dotted line and if I move it up, we can see that the line turns to red and we have a green dotted line. So if I click here, this will create a line which is the same length of these three lines. Or we could click and move the cursor so the line turns to red and now I hold shift on keyboard. This will lock the line in that direction. So I will click on this endpoint and this will create a line which is the same length of 
these three lines added together. So what happens if I click to close this boundary? SketchUp will turn that closed boundary into a face. So as you can see now, we have a blue diamond as an inference on that face. So as I mentioned before, it's very important to draw according to these axes. So for example, if we want to draw a face which is parallel to the red and the blue axis, we could click once and then move the cursor up in the blue direction and then type 5 and then move the cursor to the right and type 3 and then move the cursor down in the blue direction and then type 5 again or we could hold shift to lock it in the blue direction and then click on this endpoint and then click once again to create a face. So now we can see that the face is drawn according to the red and the blue axis. There are a couple of other lines that we need to mention, and those lines are sloped lines. So for example, if we want to draw a slope line, we can click and then click once again. So it doesn't need to be in any of these, uh, according to any of these axes. So uh, not in the green direction or the red or the blue. So this will create a sloped line for me. So what happens if I click once again, and if I want to, uh, draw a perpendicular or a parallel uh, line to the last line that we drew. Uh, when I click once, you can see that if I uh, move my cursor so the line is uh, almost perpendicular to the edge, the line turns to pink. And this is a great inference to create parallel or perpendicular lines according to the last line we drew. So now, if I create a line in this direction, or I uh, create a line in this direction, and also another line in this direction, and this one. What happens if I want to create a line which is parallel to the first sloped line that we drew? As you can see, SketchUp only holds the last line that we drew in its memory, so it will create a parallel or perpendicular line according to the last line that we drew. So if we want to create a line which is parallel to whichever line that we want, we need to move the cursor to that line and hold it on that line for about one second and then move the cursor so this line will be almost parallel to the edge and when it turns to pink you can be sure that the line is 100% parallel to that edge or when I move the cursor so that the line is perpendicular to the edge we can see that the line also turns to pink. There is also another inference that we need to talk about and this is when we have a group or a component. So for example, I will make a copy of these, uh, this shape and then right click and then create a group from this one, make group, and then create a component from this one. I will explain these groups and components in later sessions. So when we want to draw a line for this one, you can see that the green inference, which was the endpoint, now turns to purple. And you can see that at the midpoint is also uh, turned to purple. And we can see that the red square is a purple square. And everything that we have turns to purple. And this indicates that we have a group or a component. You can see that it has no difference when we want to draw on a group or a component. The inferences are all in purple. So this concludes the third lesson of the AGR SketchUp course. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.